The views and opinions expressed on Deeply Upsetting are those of the panelists and not those of the Geeks Under the Influence Network, associated brands, properties, or businesses. Listener discretion is advised. Please keep your hands inside the ride at all times. Fuck, Mary kill. Mascots I personally find upsetting. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Chuck E. Cheese, a.k.a. Charles Entertainment Cheese. The Red M&M. Wait, 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 wait. Is entertainment the middle name? Yes. How did I not know that? I don't know because I feel like I talk about it too much. It might be that if we're talking about Chuck E. Cheese, I just like glaze over and not think about it. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. Well, I thought it was Chucky for the longest time. But no, it's Chuck E. Cheese. And it's Charles Entertainment Cheese. I don't think it was a good idea to name a children's entertainment rat Charles. <laughs> That's a weird joy. Well, and they were like, Chuck is much more approachable. As and, if Chuck isn't like the grizzled guy by the gas station. And entertainment is my middle name. Oh, God. See, that's why he made the list. Specifically, the red M&M. Don't like him at all. Okay. And third, the disembodied head with a mustache Pringles. Oh, wow. I really don't appreciate him. So not even the version of Pringles that people have drawn the body for him? Because that's a thing on the internet. Well, that's that makes it worse because usually <laughs> it's like a slug kind of situation <laughs> right. or like a stick figure body, which I would be able to create. Sure. But just that like weird, slimy smile, mustache head, I really know. Mm-mm. It's like the Monopoly guy's uncle that tried to work it in the stocks, but ended up just selling hot dogs totally. on, the, on, on the street. And tries specifically to like appeal to children. I don't know. He gives me that vibe. He's trying to look friendly and he's not. But like that creepy appeal to children vibe, but like you are not the person that should be hanging out with children. Exactly. Not in a, not in a problematic way. Like he no. doesn't touch the kids or anything. No. Just no. more in the... You don't have any skills when it comes to children. Yeah, and you, you definitely don't have children. You reek of gin. Like the, yes. the mascot of Pringles reeks of gin 100%. Yeah, because he's doing that closed-lipped smile where his mustache covers his whole mouth where it's just like, oh, you've had one too many. It's almost night-night time. Like that even the bottom lashes of lashes uh, hairs sure. of, of his uh, mustache are like a little lighter because the amount of alcohol he imbibes... It, sit on his hair is long enough to bleach it a little bit yes yeah so those are three choices bye (laughs) okay so we've got uh the pringles guy Mm -hmm. the red m&m yes he's kind of a dick i I get why he's such a dick and he's always a dick to the yellow m&m who's like a cute dummy he is a cute dummy he's always being snarky like and for what you're also a candy coated chocolate yourself if i was to give the yellow m&m a t-shirt it would be i'm a joey yes he's totally, he's totally a, joey. a joey yeah totally a joey and then the first one was the uh the godforsaken rat the prince rat, of children <laughs> the rat prince of children <laughs> is bad okay so <laughs> this is a very challenging one i know and just a reminder i don't get these ahead of time neither, no oh ne- no it's a secret neither one of us do i think no bones about it mm-hmm. the the murder part is mm-hmm. i'm gonna murder the creepy mouse entertainer like that's <laughs> okay there there's a reason why chuck e cheese doesn't have them anymore there's no place in this world for that creature to exist anymore Mm-mm. charles e cheese is a thing of the past that use we... his christian name charles entertainment cheese charles entertainment i use his wanna... birth certificate name i don't want to use entertainment cheese <laughs> All cheese is entertainment cheese to me. That's true. <laughs> I'm having a blast <laughs> every time. But think about the cheese that you're going to get from Charles Entertainment Cheese. It's not good cheese. He's not giving you some nice, some nice, nice goat cheese to go on a on a wheat cracker. He's not. <laughs> he's not giving you that good, good Gouda. Like you're getting. <laughs> We've all had Chuck E. Cheese pizza. We know what kind of cheese it is. The Chuck E. Cheese pizza is just the cheese that is from the sandwich shop next door that they put in the trash. Like, then they <laughs> grab that and then they give it to an animatronic monster to <laughs> hand out to children. But also, isn't it so crazy that we all found out during the pandemic that Chuck E. Cheese himself is like a scammer among us when he tried to pass off the pizza as like a fancy pizzeria because they were trying to make money? That was buck wild. I fully forgot about that. Really? Yeah. Pasquale's pizza Pasquale's, and wings? Pasquale's. That's what it was. Pasquale's. Yeah. I will never forget. And people were doing reviews like, best pizza I've had. No, it's not. It no, won- it's not. You don't have a palate 
because that is Chuck E. Cheese pizza. And Chuck E. Cheese pizza, though better than it was when I was going to Chuck E. Cheese as a child in the fucking 80s, where it was like the cardboard you put under the pizza uh, with cheese on it, and that's what you ate. It's still not good. It's, Wait, large pause. Why? When did you have it recently? I, before we met. I, <laughs> oh, no. I, I went there with my family when uh, uh-huh. when my nephews came into town. Blame it on your nephews. I'm going to ask them. <laughs> That 100% I feel like happened. you're Charles Entertainment Cheese's wingman. The other option is that I just fucking go to Chuck E. Cheese. That's what as, I'm trying to discern here. As a man here. in his late 30s, I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese just being like, sup, video games and pizza and beer. This is my spot. <laughs> Move out of the way, kid. I want tickets. Like, <laughs> Remember when you tried to take me there for our first date? And I was like, oh, no. And you were like, it's a joke. Ha ha. Anyways, here's a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> here's literally... The other restaurant in the uh, shopping center, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> You're like, well, laser tag closed two years ago, so I guess we're going to this family restaurant that's abandoned. Going to this shifty gyro place yep. uh, next next to the uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so okay, so murder Charles Entertainment Cheese because he knows too much about you, apparently. <laughs> yes, that's exactly why. You know the uh, you heard it here first, people. The old turn of phrase is that uh, two people can keep a secret if one is dead. <laughs> So yes, exactly. that's what's happening with him. <laughs> then we got red M&M and uh, we've got disembodied head Pringles guy. Disembodied head Pringles. Does guy. he have a name? I feel like they should have named him by now. It's probably like Mr. Pringles Entertainment <laughs> Chip. Chip. Yeah, is his name. <laughs> I wish it was. Pr- <laughs> you know, we might be right. Pringles E Chip. <laughs> no. And E is for eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's better for some reason. Pringles eat chip. Okay, so so as far as the uh the the kill is out of the way, so it's fucking Mary. Yeah. So I couldn't marry the red M M&M, and uh, M because he's too annoying. He's too annoying. Like uh, it'd be one thing to be like, I hate your guts. Take it. Like that'd be one <laughs> one thing. Like I'm gonna see uh how much force is needed to break through that candy coated shell. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there's no way I'm marrying him. That's so many wives that I met when I was working in the West End in retail that married the red M&M. Yes, they did. <laughs> they came and, in. But literally, though, because they're always wearing those like red University of Richmond sweaters that they've had since like 1972 and like don't fit anymore. But it's so that they can like show their status to you like anybody gives a fuck. Like it's Richmond's Harvard or something. Like Brenda, you went to school 25 years ago there. Does anybody actually care about colleges with uh, after 10 years of right. you going there? No, they don't. They don't Spiders give a shit. Spiders are forever. <laughs> like me, me wearing a fucking, like the, my junior high school jersey or something, being like, oh, I went to this junior high school. Who fucking cares? Yeah, we, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Please stop wearing that. <laughs> it's bad too, because like I was much smaller in junior <laughs> high school. So it's like it. Almost had to get cut off the last when time. When you put it on on the weekends and then disappear mysteriously and leave your phone here, is it because you're going to Chuck E. Cheese? So for Mary, uh, <laughs> I'm going to God. I'm gonna have to choose uh, disembodied head Pringles. Pringles, Pringles eat chip as no. the uh, as the choice for my, my husband. <laughs> Wait, why? Just because he's the only option left? Well, or first is there off, any marriage material He's there? got that sweet, sweet hot dog cart money. Uh, True. So that that's helpful mm-hmm. in in to be a kept uh kept spouse. Very true. By a uh, Pringles E chip. <laughs> Please stop. No, no more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but also, I think it would be one of those like I. It is a little bit of a Burt Reynolds stash. Yeah. Just a touch of hipster. Yeah. In. Yeah. So it's like if Burt Reynolds was kind of shitty about the fact that you didn't listen to Arcade Fire. Like that's wow. That's the level that I'm. You getting. and I are getting very different um, vibes from Pringles guy. I feel like he's like a yacht rock through and through. You think? Yes. He's a yacht rocker. Absolutely, he is. One hundred percent, he is. That's where he like he drinks his gin and listens to yacht rock on the weekends. So you're picturing him as like he wears the like the open Hawaiian shirt, not in the like boogie boy kind of way, but in the like sitting on his front porch, rocking out. If you like pina coladas. Yes. And drinking gin and just talking about like, I don't know, that he was in this band once and they didn't go anywhere, but it's because they didn't let him shred on the bass. He keeps like making jokes about how he looks like Tom Selleck because he secretly wants someone to be like, yeah, 
You do actually. And nobody and nobody's ever, ever does. nobody's ever, ever said that. No. Ever. No. But also I feel like the Pringles guy is into sadism because watching me try and put my like fucking meat tubes into the tube of Pringles <laughs> and get them like trapped in there like a raptor is it's got to be like pleasurable for him. Well, I think also we have to consider the fact that I believe that he has a part down the middle. So he might be younger than you're thinking. I feel like he has a part down the middle in like a bad hairpiece kind of way. Oh, no. Not you in a Gen Z kind of way. Pringles E chip has a, <laughs> uh, a toupee as I well. I do. Yeah. A tube. Pe- no. No. I, nothing. I regretted it halfway through. Yeah. But you had to finish. I understand. I know. Yeah. And I wish I hadn't. Yeah. I wish I hadn't started. So I think, yeah, as far as fucking Pringle Man, that'd be difficult because, you know, no body. So it'd be all mouth stuff. I mean... Is that so wrong? No. I mean, no, no, not necessarily anything. And especially if it's just like a one-off. Well, also, he's got to be good at it. If that's all you have to bring to the table, you've oh, gotta got to be good at mouth oh, stuff. He's got mouth game for days. That's why he's my fuck choice. He's your fuck choice? Yeah, I feel like anybody with that kind of like fucking flavor saver going on is definitely like a pervert. Okay, no, I'm willing to accept that. What I'm not willing to accept is either other choices for Mary. Oh, no, you're right. But- oh, no, you're right. Because basically it comes down, obviously I have to kill the rat as, as well. Um, so it comes down to, do I want like an asshole little comment guy husband or do I want an alcoholic just a head husband? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough choice. It really is. I mean, I did it to myself in all yeah. fairness, but I always do. I think. Because I'm a masochist, so I guess it works well for me and the Pringles man. There is a chance with the M&M guy that. He is, he's a shit talker, but he definitely nothing behind it. Like he's got nothing to bring to the table as far as like his shit talk. He's just a shit talker. So if you double down and get more ornery than he is. And you know, I would. Yeah. Just like, all right, listen, motherfucker. Then he would just bitch about you to his friends and then go to the bar more and not be around. So you would have peace in your home. Oh, so like my life now. Yeah. Not that basically. different. Yeah. Same exact thing. <laughs> Oh my God, the, <laughs> the, the curtains have opened and I realize I am the red M&M. It's a hard discovery to make, but it, it could be worse. You're not Charles Entertainment Cheese. I don't think anybody should enjoy my candy coated shell personally. <laughs> Melts in your mouth, not in your hands oh, though. No. That's well, good. Well, true. I'd rather not melt in someone's hands. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's a positive. So that's but... sexy, right? <laughs> sure. We'll go with sexy. <laughs> now that it's l- literally me, I'm, I'm going to go that that is hot. <laughs> I support you. (laughs) So I guess that's my choice. So you're killing uh, Charles Entertainment Cheese. Easily. You are. With gusto. You're marrying the red M&M? I guess, yeah. And And then you're fucking the disembodied floating head mustache. You are fully mustache riding. Literally. Yeah. 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 That's all I can do. That'd be like sitting on a volleyball. Like you're. (laughs) I know. I know. But it's really the only option that I have. What am I going to fuck the rat? No. No one's going to fuck the rat. God, no. <laughs> that's, that's why they took it out of Chuck E. Cheese. It wasn't that it was frightening children. It, it, it didn't have enough sex appeal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he thought that entertainment would be like a sexy, like double entendre kind of thing, but it's not. No, it's not at all. Didn't work. Okay. I feel like the red M&M is the, weirdly the problematic one. Uh, in our choices, because mm-hmm. Charles E. Cheese, like, we know what's happening with him. He's getting fully, like, doused in gasoline and lit on fire in a Kmart parking lot. Like, oh, that's, yeah, I'll dance around it. Yeah, yeah, that's no problem. But to either fuck or marry the uh, red M&M, there's two, there's two kills in here. And I know. Well, really, there's three kills, if I had it my way, because sure. as previously mentioned, these are the, the mascots that haunt me <laughs> in my day-to-day life that I have to talk to my therapist about. Um, it makes sense that you're screaming about chips when you wake up from a nightmare. So yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> when I said the tubes, you thought that I was just like a human hamster, but no, it was Pringles tubes all along. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Got that sweet, sweet pizza dust all over yeah. my form. <laughs> oh no. No matter what, though, I did it to myself, but it has been, it always will be, deeply upsetting. Welcome back to Deeply Upsetting. I'm Amy Bogard. I'm Mike the Hobbit. And all right, let's just get it out there. We took a week off. And as much as I would love to tell you, it was so you could like think of some really amazing questions and like let it marinate kind of thing. 
it's because we have COVID brain. And you know what? We're getting lined up to get vaccinated, which is really exciting. So we can only use COVID brain for a short amount of time not because even, we won't be like trapped in our apartment any longer. Yeah, not that we we didn't get COVID. Oh, no, no, it's no. It's just that a year has gone by. Yeah, it's the pandemic fatigue brain if yeah. you want to be yeah, more yeah. you know, specific about it. Anyways, we're a mess, but we're trying not to be. Um, so we will be releasing, you know, more regularly as promised. We just uh, we took a little week off on accident. Um, and yeah, here we are. It was 100 percent accident. No, it actually was. We've the been time sitting on flew. these questions for like a week now. And I just, know it is what it is. And but if you didn't know we sucked, then you've never listened to the show before. So welcome. <laughs> so welcome new <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Old listeners. Same old shit. Yep, pretty much. (laughs) If you were expecting that a renaissance has happened in the last week, you are sorely mistaken. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so here's how it works. So we take your hypothetical questions and we use our expertise or lack thereof to answer them however we damn well please. Mm -hmm. But for this to work, we do need your questions. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can get it to us. So we always post on social media when we're planning on recording (laughs) and in the future when we will be recording, right? Right. Yes, Yes. Mm -hmm. that is correct. We are doing that. Um, So when you see the post, please hit us up with your questions, but you don't need to wait. If you think of something, just post it on our social media, Facebook or Twitter at Deeply Upsetting. You can go a little more old school. Send us an email, geeksundertheinfluence at gmail.com. Put Deeply Upsetting in the subject line so we can find you. Or you could send us a text. You could leave us a little voicemail at the GUI Network hotline, 804-505-4484, which is 804-505-4GUI. Sweet. So and many ways. And if you feel it, too, you don't even have to ask us a question. We would love to hear like your answers to the Fuck, Mary Kill or to any of the other questions. 100%. Make us feel like we're not alone in actually putting brain power into answering these godforsaken questions. We do need to know that other people are considering these weird ideas and thinking about what they would do or 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 say or or fuck or marry or kill yeah let us know that we live in your mind yes <laughs> we've taken up space there we pay no rent Mm-mm, not one cent <laughs> so i think that that is the business yeah. end of it so we can just jump on into the questions and i do have a question for you i'm ready i guess uh, this is from our our good friend will McCobb, who always brings uh, usually penis related stuff, I think. True, but is... he has um, let us know that this is the end of the penis related questions. I will believe it when I see yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like there's probably still some penis questions that are going to happen. Okay. In reference to Star Trek, a alien guy gets kicked in the leg and it fucks him up because not all species have their sex organs in the same place. Uh, where would be the most or least convenient place to have your bits if you had to move them is the question. Okay. So. So this one, I felt like I had a very clear answer um, for multiple reasons. So I have got it all on lock. Mine would definitely be the ankles because that is like my brand of clumsy that I crash shit into my ankles all the time. I have like very weak ankles apparently and they're just like begging to be fucked with at all times. And so I feel like my ankles are like constantly bruised up. So that would be a problem because, you know, like nobody wants to get kicked in the vagina or whatever. Is that your least convenient spot? Definitely my least convenient. But the other reason that it's less convenient is that having it on my ankles is 100% going to attract foot people, which not to kink shame, totally great. Love that for you. Not for me, though. Okay. I'm not the foot person. um, And I feel like I would question your intentions a lot if, you know... You were like, I'm down there at your bits, but also like, let me pay attention to your feet a little bit. Like, are you really just in it for the feet? Because like, they're proximity wise. My bits wise. are like two inches away from my feet. Like you, it's not like there's a travel time here. You, you don't have to buy yeah, a ticket. This does not need to be like an 80, 20 feet bits situation. Like I would like 100% on the bits, but I just feel like if I had to like disclose that to someone on a first date, that that's where my bits live. I'm going to get a foot person. I'm 100%. 100%. They see right through it. That'd be like you're 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 kissing on some nice boobs and then you're <laughs> and then you're just like but you know what I'm going to spend most of my time in the armpit. That's exactly. really Exactly. That's really where the the fun exists. Exactly. For me. And see like nobody's that into armpits that I know of. Maybe it's a thing. Um but nobody's that into it so I guess maybe a really convenient way to see if someone's like actually into me for me would be to stick it in my armpits, you know? 
You I'm cl- already very ticklish. Nobody can touch them anyway. You clearly haven't seen Flirting with Disaster starring Ben Stiller. I haven't. Should I? It's top-notch armpit licking action goes on in that movie. Does he lick armpit? I believe it's it's been a while since I've seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's him licking an armpit. It's not for me. It's really not. No. I mean, I guess if my vagina was in there, then like that's the options that we have. So you've got to like really like me. Vagina armpit is so upsetting though. That's I know. not that's not great. It's, it's a bad not spot great. for it. It's really not great. But again, like I am hellaciously ticklish as you know you can't even come near it so i guess that's a problem too would i either get less ticklish and then still be like nobody can touch me there or oh yeah would i get you know would i want people to touch? i don't even know See, i think for me the least convenient would be on my lower back like right around my tailbone so okay. like my my dick would be just like resting gently between my butt cheeks mm which, you know, is not, there's like a nice little like hot dog bun action happening there. So it's a nice, comfortable spot. But yeah. any time that I sit down or lean back, yeah, there's, I've already run into sitting on my junk. Like when sitting down just too quickly or the wrong way. No need to brag about your giant dick like that, okay? <laughs> I think most men have run into where things just sit weirdly when you sit down and then yeah. you're just like, oh, no, now I'm in pain forever. So God, that's awful. That'd be so much worse if it was on my back because there's no way to like lean comfortably against the chair or without your posture would be impeccable. Impec like sitting stick straight. Backs of chairs would just not be an issue for you anymore. Like, mm-hmm. nope, not leaning back. That's just right. not gonna happen. Or just the chairs that have the the like upper back and then just like rails on the sides so that your your back dick could <laughs> could freely just don't like that hang mm-hmm. there. So as a person who does not have a penis, what if you, every time you went to like sit back, at least like pulled your dick up so it was resting against like the middle of your back? Would that be better because it wouldn't be against like the small of your back to Uh, lean back? I mean, uh, the the dick part would be less of a concern than the balls would be. Forgot about those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, those would be part of the conversation Part of the situation like yeah. i don't think it's just the balls in the front and then the dick is way around the other side of the earth like on your back just by itself yeah true so what would be the most convenient then but oh, i i got that figured out right away oh, great uh wolverine claws that's what i was thinking but but like from the wrist area, so like the underside part mm-hmm. so i didn't have to like bet it, it i feel like it'd be a better angle to have the underside of the wrist where the dick pops out when when excited well then you're talking about you know, like hidden dick. This is like out in the open. No, but dick. even if I had to like tuck it back into a sleeve or something, that would be fine. Oh, okay. Um, and the plus side of that too is that if I'm, you know, wearing like a, a, a hoodie or something, and I meet somebody and they're old school and do the double hand shake where they like reach up your wrist and yeah, and and shake. Uh, they're jerking me off at that point. Very true. So I get like a free handy every so often. <laughs> From people that are just like very excited to meet you. And you're like, well, now I'm very excited to meet you. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> when you do like the badass guy action movie thing where the you clasp arms together, mm-hmm. 100% jerking me off in, in that ever moment. ever badass guy action movie handshakes me. That's so unfair. I want to normalize, and this is, this is my agenda for 2021, mm-hmm. normalize badass action guy handjobs. I think there hand needs to be jobs hand or jobs. Handshakes? Well, I mean, in this case, it would be both, but I think just hand jobs in general, expendables would be so much more of an interesting experience if, like, after the thing exploded and they like high five, they just all pull out their dicks and start jacking each other off. I mean, there's so much adrenaline. It makes sense. Yeah. Like, you need a release. They're just like, oh my God, I'm so like fucking ah right now. And they're like, let's all just take a moment. You know what? Normalize friends jerking each other off. I feel like this doesn't even need to be action, guys. You can get adrenaline from like, just had a really good pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, woo, let's masturbate each other. But see, as, as a man, I can speak that just like somebody that's addicted to cigarettes, you'll find any excuse to, for that to be a thing like, oh, I need a cigarette. Oh, I need a hand job. It's like, oh, I crossed the street. <laughs> Who's giving me my celebration hand job? <laughs> well, that's why you have to be around friends more often that are like excited to do it because you're like reciprocating. You can't just be the recipient. Then you run into your friend that has like a sex drive that's out of control and you go and get dinner and you've already jacked them off like four times. Yeah. But then walk out and like, oh, I'm going this way. Oh, I'm 
going this way too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's found our cars. Cross the Woo! street together. <laughs> <laughs> but then they have to reciprocate as well. You would just have to like adjust your sex drive, I guess, to whoever you're around. Yeah, I guess. Wow. Like, I, if only sex drive <laughs> cycled like periods did. We're just like you're around people with higher sex drive, so your sex drive just increases exponentially. Would be. Sounds we, convenient, yeah. Right, that is an amendment to the human body. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's in the same lane as periods, because periods are, like, never convenient for anyone. <laughs> uh, speaking for somebody that has had erections at the wrong time, sometimes erections are not convenient. That's fair. That is fair. Yeah. I guess I get that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I think um, wrist dicks mm-hmm. would be my move. Um, cool. Terrible superpower, but, you know, you work with what you got. Yeah. And back dick is bad. I don't think it would be a superpower for anyone but you. <laughs> it's not like exciting for anybody else, really. You're not going to save the world with your wrist dicks, but you're going to have a good time. But imagine if I did. That would be impressive. Like the world was saved today by a gentleman with wrist dicks. Would be. <laughs> they have to say it that way. <laughs> R- wrist panesia. <laughs> they would have to like blur out your wrists on the news. That would be amazing. I, my waves would be very. <laughs> upsetting Jarring. This, um, just and also painful if i shook my hand too much waving well you're wearing your little sleeves right yeah but still there's a lot of jostling happening i'd have to very slow like float wave You'd like have if to have you're like on a, a full jock strap for your arm d- oh an arm jock strap is not the best Teeny, tiny little jock strap oh no mm-hmm. but there's a market you know if enough people have dick wrists then uh i guess in star trek anything is possible anything is possible <laughs> So I definitely do want to hear from listeners on where they'd like their various parts to be uh, resituated. That's... True. Maybe we've been coming at it all wrong and there are like actually good answers to this question. Or maybe we're going to get some drawings that we uh, didn't really plan on getting. We are open to fan art. <laughs> this is maybe not the question to bring that up. None of them are. Yeah, true. <laughs> Absolutely none of them are. I'd rather get fan art about that than about like, Mr. Pringle going down on me or something like that's awful. Just disembodied head with a mustache, like and <laughs> thing is, you know, he makes slurping noises too. Yes, I know he does. Yeah, I feel that. There's no way he doesn't. Oh God, truly, only if it's Tom Selleck. That's my only like exception for the rule of just like a mustache forward personality. I feel like. <laughs> Mr. Pringle does not make the cut. Tom Selleck is the only one. I love mustache forward personality, but I know exactly what you mean by that. Somebody that can legitimately rock a mustache where even if it's not in the times, it doesn't work for the style or anything. That one person, you don't want to see them in anything other than a mustache. True. But also it's like the very first thing that you see when you look at them, kind of like when that horrible trend like overcorrection from the sperm brows happened where girls were just like marking out their brow with like a giant piece of chocolate basically and it was just this <laughs> right? humongous smear of an eyebrow where you see someone and you're like oh hey eyebrows okay that's the very first thing i thought that's the only thing i will think i have to not look at them all the time that is a mustache that powerful of a mustache like yeah. mr pringle e chip has i'm not no i said it once i can't say it again that's fair <laughs> And I understand what you mean that a piece of facial hair becomes the entire personality of a person. The whole thing. Is a lot. Yeah. As somebody that does rock a beard, I don't feel like my beard is my personality. Like no. it's not so symbiotic to my face that it like takes it over and it becomes its own animal with the facial hair. Like there's other so. stuff happening. Too. Yes. <laughs> you have other face <laughs> I have other attributes. face. There's just other faces. Just other right? face. Yeah. I have other face. <laughs> like, stop staring at my beard. My face is up here. <laughs> Pretty <please>. much. <laughs> Shall we move on to the next question? I, I, I think it's probably important that we do. Or else we're just going to brainstorm more places to like put our bit, which could go on forever. The back of the knee. Yeah. Like, no, that was my very first thought yeah. that that would be upsetting. Every time you walked, you'd just be in either pleasure or lots of pain. Or just like annoyance. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It's kind of like it reminds me of when you're for anybody who has a vagina that can like get with me on this one. When you're wearing something where it's like kind of tight and it's just rubbing against your vagina like in a bad way and you're like, I wish this fucking thing wasn't here. (laughs) I feel like it would be like that. (laughs) And that so much to a lesser degree of having a penis and balls all out there. Like I cannot even imagine. I just also realized that if I had a penis and balls hanging off my lower back, I would have people truck nuts. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, no. That is the worst. That is truly the worst thing in the world. Like, I would have to wear high-waisted pants, or otherwise mm-hmm. I'd be showing, like, the top of my balls. Uh, or, Some long I, well, shirt. Shaft, shaft and ball. Like, uh, yeah. The ultimate just... tramp stamp. <laughs> oh, no. I could mushroom stamp. Yep. From the tramp stamp area. That would be... And see, remember when I said we should move on to the next question and then we just kept going with this question yep. and it just got worse and worse? I, we fucking knew that. Yeah. <laughs> we okay. knew so, that, that was Okay, happen. we need to go to the next question. We then. have to. Okay. Our next question is from frequent contributor um, to all of the shows, Mike Reiser. We know him. We love him. Is He's funnier than anyone I've ever met in my life. He <laughs> is such a trip. We adore him. Such a gigantic weirdo in the best way humanly yep. possible. So Mike asks, one video game character of your choice becomes real but and this is a big but they will be around you 24 7 who are you picking that is difficult because video game characters uh by uh intention are big personalities and annoying as fuck like yep. you think mario is like one of the first ones that people would think of but like you don't want to be around mario all the time no huge main character energy like, as if you just forgot your brother existed all the time. That's what it feels like. And also, th- the pros that you get from hanging out with Mario uh, and is that he's good at plumbing. Like, how often does that come into play? Like, oh, cool, I don't have any drips in my house. I'm good for seven years. And then <laughs> that one talent that Mario brings to the table being around you all the time is just, like, for not. I mean, we live in Richmond City, though, and I feel like the toilets are just... For better term, for lack of a better term, a crapshoot. <laughs> and sometimes you can have plumbing issues like all the fucking true. time. That's true. So I guess it just depends on your station at this moment in true. time. That is fair. That's a fair point. I, I think uh, then then you got Sonic, which would be nice that if you're hanging out with friends and be like, oh, man, I, uh, we're running low on beer. If somebody could just like quickly run out, that'd be great. And oh, then, you're back. And then great. everybody is like slowly turns and looks at Sonic. <laughs> like, yeah, if only somebody would... <laughs> Run out real quick. (laughs) Sonic's like, I'm wasted. Could somebody else go? (laughs) Nope. Sorry. Although Sonic, I don't see Sonic as much of a drinker, though. He'd probably some really sketchy, like, slowdown juice. uh, Oh, no. I think Sonic would end up becoming a heroin addict. Oh, no. Just to slow the world down a little bit. Just to see what it's like as like a normal person, basically. Well, could you imagine that or he's, a normal talk- hedgehog. he's talking to a person normally and he's so like fast with everything that people are talking at our speed and he hears, so I went to the store the other day. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was really impressive. Thank you. Slow-mo. Yeah. Yeah. And he's Skills just like, you didn't okay, yeah, you went to the store. It'd be like in Zootopia when they're talking oh, to the true. sloth DMV person. Mm-hmm. So that, that's got to be challenging. So he would keep me motivated because he'd be so annoyed at how slow I was moving all the time that I'd yeah. be getting and going. But there's only a point before I'm just like, bro, it's my day off. Right. Like, what do you want? Like, I'm allowed to chill. I'm still not past the idea of heroin being called slow down juice. <laughs> I haven't gotten past that one yet, so forgive me if I'm not responding as well. I'm still uh, thinking about uh, it. That's what they call it on the street. Oh, do they? Yes. Is I, that what the kids call it? They they call it uh, the slow down juice, yeah. I don't know the kids that well. Thank God I have you here to like keep me young and hip. With all the heroin slang. <laughs> that's uh, Specifically. Important. That's the only slang that I'm uh, up to date on. And see, I'm young and hip in every other way except for heroin culture. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we balance each other out. It's perfect. It's You've perfect. got literally everything else, and I've got heroin culture. Cool. <laughs> I'm real stoked about that. <laughs> hey, if this was the late 90s, you would have me in the bag for sure. Yeah. Heroin chic all over the place. I think the problem with a lot of protagonists in video games, too, is that, uh, and I said, I know video game character, but you've got like Gears of War and Halo and Call of Duty. All those dudes are just so fucking intense that. Yeah. You, be just so stressed out all the time like they, you need some chill video game character just to, like i got it fucking spyro okay the, the fucking purple dragon yes this is like fucking hanging out being like hey i need to go to the store hey purple dragon friend can you give me a <laughs> ride and they'd be like sure and they'd like take <laughs> you to the store and it'd be fucking chill it would be spyro is a character that will get shit done when necessary but knows how to chill when it's important. That is a really great way to go. Yeah. I agree. So I'm going Spyro. I guess that honestly, in the same vein of what you started with, I would definitely not choose Mario. No, sick of it. Um, 
but I would probably choose Luigi because we could really all use like a great supporting character. And Luigi would always make you feel like the main character because he's so used to it. That's true. And you'd be like, no, Luigi, like you tell everyone what you think. And he'd be like, no, you're funnier than me. That's my Luigi accent. It's really bad. That's really great. That's <laughs> Is solid. it? Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm workshopping it currently, but I wasn't ready to debut it yet. <laughs> everyone deserves a beta Luigi best friend. Exactly. Because he would make you truly just feel like the main character all the time where everything you said, he would be like, that's a good one. And you're like, oh. Thank you. Wow. I really didn't even think it was that funny, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm also realizing just how closely the Mario voice, or Mario and Luigi voice is to Jar Jar Binks from the Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> True. Or, I prequel. think that Mario and Luigi like go up more in the inflection a little bit. than it's me instead of. Yeah. Eyes that go. Yeah. Yep. That's, exactly. Mm, more enthusiasm, it's... really. They're like ready to fucking go all yeah. the time. So that would be a little bit tough. I would have to. um get Luigi more into my like more sedentary lifestyle, I think. <laughs> but I still think that he would have a good time. I would introduce him to like marijuana or something and he'd be like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> it's a weed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would be good from there. But he would just always, I don't feel like he would ever get in my way. God, I wish that that, that would be like the way to calm down Luigi to be chill where Luigi's like, oh, <laughs> it's a me, there's ghosts. Because that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing in the video games is that Luigi has the more like spooky stuff that he deals with. True, he deals with, like ghosts and shit. And then you get him weed, and he's just like, "Do you ever look at the back of a dollar bill, man?" <laughs> and just fully chills out. Conspiracy theory guy. And he talks about ghosts, but you're also stoned, so you're just like, "Yes, tell me more about ghosts." But also the thing is, I'm not really afraid of ghosts. I like embrace it. So I would probably be like, "Yes, Luigi, talk to me more about it." I'm like. I'm hungry for some pasta. <laughs> Did I tell you the time that I've met a ghost in a castle? And you're like, yeah, tell me, Luigi. Tell me, Luigi, and make this. the pasta. Make like, the start, pasta start also. that right So now. you get just like spaghetti all the time. Oh, hell Fucking yeah. Fucking great. Enough said, period. Yeah. And also amazing ghost stories, like yes. literal ghosts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And also like would be willing for me to go on the adventures with him, but it's not like a requirement. He's used to like driving alone, you know, doing things alone. Mario's not always available because he's like better than everybody else. So. And he can guide you. He's like, oh, it's okay. You just look at the ghost. They look away. They shy. <laughs> You're like, okay, cool. Thanks, Luigi. Way better it's... Luigi impression than mine is. I'm impressed. <laughs> really good. If that's like my one impression I can do is Luigi. Great. Hey, you're knocking him out today. You got slow mo. You yeah. got Luigi. Okay, cool. That, that's two now out of two. All, <laughs> yeah, like, all out of... of them. <laughs> cool. Put that in my back pocket. Maybe it means that like this year is the year that you come into your impression own and you come into like the good impressions that you're able to do. Yeah, but if this is where it starts, like the choices of impressions that I'm going to end up good at are going to be really bad. I'm going to get like Rip Taylor. I'm going to nail. Finally, uh, finally. I've been asking for that. It's going to be very important. In like sexual ways. Yeah, that is true. Uh, <laughs> that's why our bedroom is lousy with confetti. So much fucking <laughs> confetti everywhere. <laughs> not saying that I'm mad at it because nothing deserves celebration more. So I'm, exactly. I'm in. I'm exactly. fucking in. But uh, we got Rip Taylor. We got Luigi. Mm -hmm. We've got slow mo voice. <laughs> For when we're on the slow down jumps. And then I don't know, like Johnny Bravo, maybe. Just throw oh, it wow. I mean, that's hot. Cool. But so derivative because that's just him doing like an Elvis impression. Yeah. So it's Elvis impression from a cartoon and me doing an impression of the cartoon doing the Elvis impression. Also very topical and cool. People do Johnny Bravo all the time. Like when are you not walking down the street hearing people talk about Johnny Bravo anymore? You know, in 2021 when yeah. everybody's like, oh, you know that Johnny Bravo? Mm -hmm. Love that guy. Constantly. Only somebody here knew how to do an impression would really make the evening. <laughs> I hear that all the time, so it makes sense that you've been, like, rehearsing in the bathroom all really? the time. Did someone call my name? <laughs> well, uh, you see now. Yeah, that's it. That's my whole impression. <laughs> the problem is it was good. <laughs> oh, no. That's what sucks. No! <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like you have to do Rip Taylor because you've introduced it already. See, the thing is, like, I, I think Rip Taylor and I immediately think Jerry Lee Lewis. I don't know if they sound... That, I don't really... Oh, there's confetti like that's is that jerry lee lewis it's definitely not rip taylor <laughs> so <laughs> i honestly didn't 
I couldn't place a Rick Taylor imp- a Rip Taylor impression if I tried. So truly, whatever you did, I was going to be impressed with because I just cannot place it. And unfortunately, we are recording this live. Yeah. Without, like pausing it to hear Rip Taylor. But I guess we found my line is that oh, like it's right up to Rip Taylor, but not including Rip Taylor. That's, uh, that's the that's not trick yet. There. Not yet. Aspirations are important. That and I, I need to work on that and my Christopher Walken. Yeah, I mean, we all, I think everyone in the world should have a Christopher Walken in their back pocket. About half do right now. They do, but most of them are bad. We all need to have like a, a C plus impression of Christopher Walken in our back pocket. Like I would prefer that they ask me that in an interview rather than like where I see myself in five years. And a little trivia for you actually with Christopher Walken okay. impressions. That is actually how Thanos sussed out the snap. The half of the people that disappeared were the ones that did not have Christopher Walken impressions. Oh, so, come on. Which means Everyone that should have been more prepared. Captain America has one doozy of a Christopher Walken impression, apparently. So it's good I to haven't know. seen it yet. Any day now, I will watch yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working my way through the Marvel movies right now, actually. You are? It's my first time. So I know about Thanos, obviously. That's like been ruined. But I don't know who survives and who doesn't. The Thanos snap. So thanks a lot. <laughs> is basically the same thing as like Luke, I am your father. Like it's it's become such oh, a yeah. part of our yeah, like, yeah. existence that you can't really be mad about it being oh, ruined. Oh, no, not at all. No. It's kind of like, though, if I didn't. Oh, well, he says Luke. So I know who he says it to. Okay. It's like if I didn't know who says Luke, I am your father. That's where I'm at right now with the Thanos snap that I know he snaps. and I know that a bunch of people die. But I don't know who dies and who lives. Weirdly, the red M&M is I, not, dies? N- not in the Fuck rest yes. of the films at all. But that one moment where he snaps and suddenly the red M&M guy is like, oh, no, snap. If I made the movie, absolutely. He, Chuck E. Cheese and the Pringles guy <laughs> would all die in a fucking fire. Oh, uh, why am I disintegrating? Everyone else like disintegrates, but they l- get lit on fire and have a s- scene where they scream as they burn alive. For like 15 minutes. It's really egregious. And the Pringles guy's like, oh, I don't want to go. Because he talks kind of like Mario and Luigi. Yep. And then I'm there. And I'm high out of my mind with Luigi, who's also high for like one of the first times. And because like this line has now gotten crossed into our friendship because like drugs have been involved. He's like fucking me in my armpit vagina. And it's so, so pornographic. I do don't remember this in the movie, but it's I, a deleted scene. But if you're a true Marvel fan, you know it. You know that scene. <laughs> you know that scene. It's a post credit. It's a post post credit scene. So like the post credit scene happened, and then if you keep going and you see like the really little people that get thanked and all of the music credits and stuff like that, then after that you get to watch all of them die horrifically, and like we all cheer and stuff like that. And me and Luigi are cheering as we are having armpit sex. I, if there was any way for us to get away with using the title of this show as being Stoner Luigi Armpit Fucking, I uh, wish. I I wish. And see, censorship is a really big problem in this country. Yeah, that's what Luigi. Which is why it was a post post credit scene. It was supposed to be a main film scene. (laughs) Talk about film A. Talk about film. Talk about cinematic experience. (laughs) That's that's only available on the Criterion Collection (laughs) of. of Avengers, yeah. <laughs> Truly. I was really up for like an Oscar for that, but because it got pushed to the post post credit, they weren't gonna have it anymore. <laughs> so instead I want a Razzie, which I think is just as good. Just I as haven't good. done any research into what it is, but I think it means that you're like full of razzmatazz. <laughs> yep. That's definitely what it is. That's what it means, right? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Razzmatazz. I'm so excited for that. You I'm know, gonna be Hollywood at the ceremony. Is really, really intent on making sure people with proper razzmatazz get recognition i've been saying for years yeah and even though she's been dead for a while judy garland wins every year <laughs> so <laughs> it's finally time for someone else to come along me and win it for a weirdly fully clothed on my account pornographic scene <laughs> in an avengers movie perfect with a horrific death in the background <laughs> <laughs> perfect i'm into it everyone wants to see Chuck E. cheese die i feel like that's just like in ingrained in us i think even her. as a child when there were animatronics at a chuck e cheese i was just like can you die can well, you please that was even worse i feel like i wanted them to die in even worse ways then the the worst Full was that this was bad this wasn't like disneyland level animatronics this was like carny level animatronics mm-hmm. so the hard sudden shaking jerking motions that the <laughs> animatronics it was made so jarring so 
sudden jerk motion and then everything shook a little bit weird and yep. then turn the hands turn up and then <laughs> shook back and forth and down and then shook a little bit more not it was so fucking heinous i feel like they weren't programmed to do that but they wanted to kill <laughs> they were ai the, the shaking was because they were shaking so they were so ready to murder yeah yeah <laughs> they were ai that were just like glued into a specific place and that was just so infuriating for oh, them if ultron's feet were were bolted to the floor he'd be like oh i want to murder but i guess i'm just gonna dance that's another reference that i don't get yet yeah. but soon, soon 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 we can actually talk about this on the show all right cool <laughs> hey i watched star wars for the first time i just gotta watch the marvel movies yeah. i lived in a religious bunker <laughs> essentially my entire childhood let me have this we should have a special episode. a religious bunker no no that too but also <laughs> we should have a special amy watched all the movies episode of marvel universe deeply upsetting where all the questions are marvel related Ooh, for... but also it's just like a one woman show where i air all my grievances <laughs> Because that I would love. Put that on the back burner. As... <laughs> All right. Well, we'll revisit. <laughs> yeah. We will revisit. Yours is okay, too. <laughs> Speaking of visiting, uh, I think we should move on to the last question here before we... Uh... Yes. So the next question and uh, the last question for this evening is uh, from our friend Jack, the Dungeon Master. The Dungeon Master. Yes. Uh, we will not speak to whether or not that's a D&D dungeon or a sex dungeon or both. Or both. Or both. Uh, this comes Jack, from Jack contains multitudes. Now, th this is actually kind of in line with uh, Will's question, although it's not junk specific. True. What visible part of your body, breast, head, finger, etc., would you want multiples of? How many would be too many? Great question. Um, and I have a few different answers for different moods. Okay. First of all, can the extra part of the body be on top of the current part of the body. I don't see why not. Okay, great. Then I want another butt on top of my <laughs> lackluster butt Okay. to make it like a more proportionate butt to so, my life. So you want like a butt version of Russian nesting dolls? Yes, okay. I want a butt within a butt. I mean, isn't that basically getting like Brazilian butt lift? You just put fat from the rest of your body into your butt. Yeah, but there's a whole other butt in there. It's not like they're like peeling the skin off your body and then adding to your butt, like there's literally like, like a bad landlord that just paints over the wallpaper. Like yeah. it's just, it's well, just another butt. extra fat into the butt. So if possible, I would just like another butt, like copy pasted on top of my butt to add volume to said butt. But that means you have a secret butt. That means no, you have no. a- No, no. You wouldn't be able to tell that I have a secret butt. It would just look like I have like a butt that works on my life. Like a good sized butt but, instead but of saying, my concave in, butt. Inside of your second butt would be an additional smaller rushing nesting doll butt. Yes. Guess what, bitch? Nobody has to know. It's basically like if I rush a nesting doll, like glued them all together. So you had no idea that there was something inside there. It's just a little doll. That's what my <laughs> butt would be. It would just be a it would just be a doll. There would be a secret butt in there that's for me to know and for nobody else to fucking find out. And they never will. So that is my one answer. Love to have extra butt. That would be awesome. Basically, if I could get like a Brazilian butt lift without um, paying American doll hairs for it, that would be amazing. I would love to get extra butt. My other answer is I would love to have two heads for very specific reasons. Number one, makeup artist love to do two separate looks on my two separate heads if I have the time. Sure. Like what an absolute like fucking work of art to have two different looks if i can do that you know that'd be amazing but also what if my other head had like a good brain in it that worked <laughs> right and like produced its own serotonin what imagine but what if the other head was the red m m brain oh that fuck. was in there and you're <laughs> well, stuck. these are the risks that we have to take yeah that's a that's a coin toss it really is but like you know how there are some people who live in the world right now and they like do not have anxiety or I've like heard of these people, the sads um, in a real way. They exist, believe it or not. Like the what Sasquatch. If, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that they exist, but we can't prove it. Um, but they might actually exist. What if they existed on my fucking corporeal form? I had one head who could be like, chill out, baby, to my sad head <laughs> that currently exists. And then my sad head would chill out, baby, 
But would it, or would it be one of those moments where somebody that doesn't deal with anxiety and depression on a regular basis doesn't have those like hurdles to climb at any point? So you'd be going out and hanging out with friends and then you're completely like well-adjusted head is just having a blast talking to people, not being uh, worried about it, like how they look or how they're acting and just having a good time. And you're sitting there now having to additionally second guess yourself because you're attached to the confident head. Oh, fuck. So my second head is actually just like cooler than me. So it's like middle school all over again, except for instead of the popular girl, it's just my better head. OK, I changed my mind. Um, because also I'm thinking about it too. And I'm like, well, if that's the case, then it could go the other way where my sad head affects my happy head and just like saps it of all of its will to live. And then they both have seasonal affective disorder and I have to take like double the amount of vitamin D that's expensive. So, okay, never mind. We're going with secret, butt. secret, butt. okay, secret, <laughs> but, okay. Secret, but um, I think I want to have another s- set of hands for each side. Pervy. Okay, go but- on but I want them to be facing the opposite way. So you can high five yourself all the time? No, so I can middle finger easier, but like if... if <laughs> Important. If, let's say hands, like not just the fingers, but the hands. So there's two hands facing opposite directions. He's doing a demonstration that's just for me, not for the listeners. Yes, that's coming off of my wrist. So mm-hmm. I have fingers that are pointing upward and fingers that are pointing downward, um, like our palms. So it looks like he's doing the Napoleon Dynamite, like butterfly move. Butterfly move, yeah. yeah. But that way... If I need to pick at something under something, I don't have to turn my palm around and reach under or, you know, like okay, I, I full feel laziness is what we're doing. It's here. laziness. Also, just de- dexterity. Imagine being um, in charge of anything, building a computer, or working on a car True. or anything requiring um, some dexterity of fingers. There's True. some angles that I can reach from having a hand that can turn upward on my wrist um, and downward at the same time. That would be fucking rad. Quick question that relates to my like head thing that I really wanted to work until you shit all over it. How <laughs> dexterous are your current fingers? They're tiny little sausage fingers. So your other hands would also be tiny little sausage fingers. That's why I need 20 of them to match True, the but normal if none pen. of them were dexterous and they were just like crashing into each other all the time. That's why I need a second hand that faces a different direction because the hand I have now can't do a, what it's supposed to. <laughs> I need a a second hand. (laughs) So if you had 20 less dexterous fingers, it would almost be like having 10 dexterous fingers. (laughs) Yeah, basically. Yeah. I need need four hands to do the work of two. (laughs) I tried to do that with my brains. Yeah. So that makes sense. (laughs) And also it would make waves so fucking intense. Oh, true. Like the way, like I could wave to a whole crowd without turning. True. Like I just hold my hands up and everybody's getting, you get a wave, you get a wave, everybody gets a fucking wave. Also the amount of accidental clapping. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God, so much accidental so clapping. So much accidental clapping in awkward times, like at a funeral where you're just like verklempt and you bring your hands up to your head and then they clap and you're like, no, I'm not clapping at the oh, death. I'd have to do some yoga so I could get my arms to reach all the way around the back so I could clap in the front and swing my arms around like a wild man and clap behind me as well. Wow. Utilizing all four hands. That is a very upsetting image. Yeah. And make sure to dead eye stare somebody in the face oh, I know you would. as I was doing this I know manic you double clapping. That's a way to not get mugged. Just start <laughs> doing that shit. You are good to go. If you're in a city where that's the only way that you can not be mugged is to do four-handed manic clapping, then uh, I, I think there's more important things to be worrying about <laughs> at that point. Um that's a superpower right You have like there. three hands. They're like, fuck three hands. I don't give a shit. Give me your wallet. Mm-hmm. Like three hands is not enough. They're like, yeah, I've seen three hands before. What whoop do you fucking do? But you add that fourth hand. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa there, <laughs> cowboy. This is overwhelming now. This is too much for me. I mean, it is. Like I could handle 15 digits, but 20, you got me. You got me. Also pervy, which is great. Like yeah. you could do some really like nasty shit with four hands. I could jerk off four people at the same time. Wow. They'd have to be sitting in a very weird position for that to work. I mean, positioning but... is important in any kind of like sexual romp, yeah. so it's fine. A lot of like legs over legs. Like I think everyone would deal just like for the innovation of it all, like to be part of the first like four handed masturbation session 
with one person, I think that they would probably like make a lot of concessions for that. And I know that I have friends that it's not even that they'd be like super into me being the one to do it so much as that they'd be interested to see how that would work. That would volunteer be like, I'll, I'll volunteer my junk to be Absolutely. part of this experiment. I would want to be there or at least I'd want to be like a creepy voyeur. Like sitting in the corner being like, yes, no, I'm not sure, but keep going. Well, either I'm like perched up on my giant ass, which I can't fucking wait for. Or me and my two heads are just like heckling this shit, which would be amazing <laughs> as well. And I feel like that's something that you have to come to terms with. If you're getting jerked off by one person with you, know, like three of your other friends, then you prepare for like a little bit of heckling. This is a weird situation. What if you have the too cool for school head that's just like mm, seen it? Then I would be like, bitch, tell me everything. Like spill the tea 100%. I want to know. It's fine. It's not that big a deal. Oh, what if my... Uh, second head was one of those people that had like seen a lot of stuff and like knew a lot of things, but was like, well, I don't talk about other people's issues. And I was just like, are you serious? You're like chock full of fucking hot goss and you're not going to tell me anything. Also, you've got to call attention to a person that would take issue with a person with two heads, one head not telling the other head what happened. Like, I feel like that's just a known quantity that if you tell one head, like one head's asleep, just weirdly dangling off to the side, snoring, just the other, the body's upright, yeah, and the head is just passed out, Ugh. dangling head, really awkward looking, and one head's awake and is like, okay, I've got to tell you about this one thing. That head tells the other head, you can't get mad. No, you can't get fucking mad. No, you share well, a especially body because the other one could be faking it, which I would. Yeah, one hundred percent. If someone was like, oh, I have to tell you some stuff, but like, I don't want your other head to be here, I would be like. <gasps> And pretend to pass out. Obviously, I'm a great I'm, actress. You're a I could pretend to say bad sleep. liar, and I also know. going me 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 <laughs> does not come off as I would totally me 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 me. <laughs> but hopefully, they're like drunk enough that they wouldn't notice <laughs> if they're spilling all the good tea. Like maybe they're like really wasted, and they're just like, "Wow, that really happened." She's like a full muppet, and my other head's like, "Yeah, I fucking know." <laughs> She's annoying. Oh god, because <laughs> I feel like I'm. When it comes to like the Muppet or a man conversation from the first Muppet movie, sure. I would say I'm a little bit more Muppet like half the time. I think that's both of us to be <laughs> we honest. We are both very Muppety. Very Muppety. <laughs> but luckily not very uppity because that no, would be worse. No. Muppety is great. Not like your second head. No, she's a bitch. I already can't stand <laughs> her. I'm fucking over that shit. Jesus. I think she's better than me. She came here second. I was here first. Are yeah. you serious? I mean, I didn't do a great job while I was here, but like she just got here. Try and fix shit. But honestly, you can't come in late to the party and then expect everything to be what you want it to be. I mean, no, exactly. Yeah. If you want to like talk about it, then be about it. How about that? Yeah. Bitch? How about that? Oh my Second God. head. Fuck you. <sighs> I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that about wraps it up. Huh? I think that's the best we're going to be able to do on this one. Yeah. yeah we're that's, gonna have to uh... talk to our second heads about <laughs> stuff. The secret butt was a way better, way better way to go. I just want more butt. I feel like that's not too much to ask. I would just always be confused as to like access points, access points for this first butt. Like, no, you never see the first butt. You just don't know it exists. It's just like if I took a fake butt and then just like glued it to my butt, you wouldn't know that there was another butt under there if it was like a good prosthesis. It's like those rare times that you see photos on the internet of somebody getting an orange and opening it up, and there's a smaller orange yes. that's inside yeah, the first but orange. What are you skinning me? You would never know that there's another butt under there. I mean, now I'm curious. So maybe you've well, set up. Clearly, there's not another butt under my butt now. It's you, pretty paltry. Maybe you had a, a small, small, but like a non-existent butt. And you're like, I want a second butt. And then you got a second butt. And you're like, this is not enough butt. That would be tragic. Honestly, I don't even know how I would like continue doing the world. What if it was if like I... a thin veneer of butt? I feel like that's what I have now. Just like, just <laughs> if I had less butt than this, then it would truly go inwards. <laughs> it would be like so sad. A quarter inch of butt that just gets <laughs> added to your. So, so it's just like butt skin, the tiniest little bit of butt meat, and then butt skin again. <laughs> I really don't love the term butt meat, but yeah, that's pretty much what I have now. I feel like I have like a very minor bite of butt meat. And that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and the full snap of skin. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool because I'm not into big butts, but I'm into butt skin. <laughs> yeah, stop into talking it. about that, actually. Yeah. It makes me really uncomfortable because it makes it very clear, like, why we're together. <laughs> All I, of my skin. <laughs> I plan on skinning you to look for the orange inside. When is that happening? Uh, probably after we finish recording this because the secret is out. Fucking finally. Right? All right, great. Well, 
um, while I'm being skinned alive, what you could do is go buy our merch. That would be really cool, especially because we have a new fucking shirt, which I'm actually ordering as soon as we stop recording because it is the shirt of my whole dreams where it has the love of my life, Stanley Tucci on it. And it says fucking Tucci gang. Tucci gang. Which is the gang I will rep for life. We also have a second shirt that came out from our okay, Atheist Horse, that horse is Girls important. Forever. Yes. And I've got to give nothing but like the biggest thank you and appreciation and love to Hellcat oh and RVA. Hellcat yes. and RVA did the thing with she our did it. Kyle's Our Temporary Horses, Horses Are, Are Forever, Forever. Uh, t-shirt that Poetry you can get motion. any color you want, but uh, it is being shown on pink because if you're going to get a horse girl shirt, you should get it on pink. And the horse has a middle part and it we does. love her. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Thank Holly you. McCobb did that. It's absolutely incredible. I can't believe I didn't even bring that up, but it's because we took a fucking week off yeah. <laughs> and my brain did as well. Um, but it is absolutely amazing. So you can get that, which you should, and plenty of other things at our Tee Public site. It is GUIPodcast.com slash store. Proceeds are still going to the Holly Fund which is supporting Richmond restaurant workers. Yay. And their shirts for us, their shirts for all the other shows on the network, which by the way, if you're not listening to them, then fuck you. Wow. Right at the I'm end. I'm going hard. Like mm-hmm. for an hour they've been listening and at the end they're just like, oh, okay, fuck me. Okay, cool. Usually That's... I'm like slightly shitty to the listeners and I haven't been doing that today. So it I, it had to happen at the very end. Sorry, blame it on my second head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can do that now, huh? Yeah. Yay. Um, <laughs> listen to the other shows. They're great. They're really really good and like worth your fucking time so do it listen to them subscribe wherever you get your podcast rate and review let us know what you want us to change we might do it who knows um and if you want to hear our amazing jaunty little tune our theme song it is called payday it's by jason farnham it's in the show notes and we love it so much sweet i think we had a lot of fun discovering uh secret butts and uh our hatred for animatronic mouse monsters who doesn't though that's what i really want to know if somebody has like a chuck e cheese fetish we won't like say your name or anything but i just want to know it'll be uh, anonymous see, it's these conversations that make me worried that the fbi is watching me only because of the weird fucked up shit i search for on google yeah so yeah but i feel like it exists it almost certainly does somebody has a chuck e cheese fetish there's definitely like chuck e cheese fanfic or fan art or something like that and if it's you let us know we won't tell anybody unless you want us to. And that, if you're that's into your that. furry suit, but you call it Chucky Squeeze. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Fucky Cheese. Fucky Cheese. That's it. That's, that's the one. That's the one. That's the that's one. That's it. Yeah. On that note, for another episode of Deeply Upsetting. Deeply. I'm Amy Bogard. I'm Mike the Hobbit. Okay, bye. GUIPodcast.com Oh, it's okay. You just look at the ghosts. They look away. They shy. In a world ravaged by movie studios that keep rehashing the same things, only one podcaster has the guts to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit as he traverses the internet to bring you some of the best and worst ideas for reboots, remakes, and reimaginings of some of your favorite and least favorite TV and film properties. Ideas like a John Waters He-Man movie, Fantastic Four the musical, and Aliens, done entirely with marionettes. What podcast would bring this evil upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Available anywhere you get your podcasts. Hey guys, Scotty Big Daddy Preston here. That's right, the geek father asking you to join me here every other week with friends and family of the GUI Network as we go through all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So remember, join us or cry. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. 